Hello everyone, DM Gashbad here, and we are back with the Marvel Zombies board game. If you watched the last one, which was the tutorial mission of the Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance game, you'll know that I am playing concurrently the Marvel Zombies game, the Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance, Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, and Zombicide First Edition all at the same time. I'm painting the models as I go, and I have formed them all together in kind of a loose campaign. I went into all this in greater detail in the last video. I'm only going to put up the rules for the campaign, the guidelines that I'm following up here right now. You can pause it and read them if you want to. Also, if you're curious, here's a list of the heroes that are currently alive and the heroes that are currently dead, as well as a list of the known bystanders that are alive. None have died so far. So now here's the first game in Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance. This is the smaller retail boxed game that you can get at Target and places like that. I'm starting with just the basic components of the game right now. I'm not adding in anything from the other Marvel Zombies game or the stretch goal stuff from the Kickstarter stuff. The game comes with six heroes to choose from and you're supposed to pick four. So I've gone with Spider-Man, Hulk, Black Panther, and Vision. Primarily I picked these guys because I already have them painted. I've got models for each of them from the old Night Models Marvel Universe Miniatures game. The scale is about the same. I think they fit in pretty well. Yeah, Knight Models make some strange choices with the proportions of their miniatures. I mean, that Hulk is just ridiculous. He's all metal, though. All these guys are metal, which is impressive to move around the table. You're never going to see a metal Hulk miniature that size again. But you know, all miniature designers make decisions as to the proportions of their figures. I personally like Simon's Marvel Zombies miniatures. But they are a little bit chunkier, their heads are a little bit bigger. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just a design choice. And it doesn't completely line up with what Night Models has done, but I think it's fine. Close enough. But like I said, this is the tutorial mission. Shouldn't take too long, shouldn't be that hard. A group of superheroes has gathered in New York because we've heard about some crazy virus going around and that some of the superheroes might be infected. It's a small map, just two board sections. Our goal is to rescue at least one bystander and to claim both of the objectives. There's one objective in the top right room of the building on the left, and I forgot to place the objective in the big room in the building on the right. I'll get to that in a minute. There are two spawn zones, one in the bottom left and one in the top center, and the only other special rule is that there's a rule called the rumors were true. We're going to start with a zombie hero on the board at the exit zone. That's where I have to get to at the end of the game. We draw one randomly and we get Zombie Iron Man. So unfortunately, Zombie Iron Man did not survive the zombie apocalypse, and he's here to eat our brains. Zombie Iron Man is a bit of a problem. He's too far away from my heroes to take him out this round. And what he's going to do in his turn is he's going to move two zones. And if he can see anyone within range of one to two, he's going to blast him with his repulsor blast. I'm going to take a wound. I don't want that to happen. So I really need to get off the street. Anyone who's hanging around in this center section of the street is going to get zapped. So I think what I'm going to do is move into that left hand building first, clear that out, and then move off to the right. So with that in mind, I'm going to start off with Spider-Man. Peter Parker has three actions. He's going to spend his first to move up one zone into the center of the board, and then he's going to use one action to open the door to the building on the left. That building has four rooms. Two of them hold bad guys, and one of them holds a bystander. I'm going to start with the far room on the top right. We spawn two walkers, and they rush, so they immediately move into the room directly opposite Spider-Man. That room also has a zombie spawn, and we get two runners. You may have noticed that I'm using models from the Zombicide game to replace the card standees that come with the Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance game. Likewise, I'm also going to be using the bystander models from the regular Marvel Zombies game as well. The bystander for this building turns out to be a Koye, by the way. Kind of a bunch of bad guys to deal with for the first room. And I want to go in there because I want to get away from Zombie Iron Man, so I'm going to have to hope that my companions can clear these guys out. To help out with that, Spider-Man is going to use his special ability. His blue ability is Heroic Rescue, so he can spend a power on his turn and draw any bystander or superhero in an adjacent zone into his zone. So he spends the one power that he gained at the beginning of the round to go and web Hulk. I'm going to drag him forward into the center of the street, into my zone, and then Spider-Man's going to launch himself into that building, into that whole mess. So Hulk is up next. I moved him one zone forward, so he's going to have a full two attack actions when he gets into that zombie-filled room. Spends his first action to move into that room, and then he uses Smash. That's three dice hitting on fours. Only gets one hit, though, and so crushes one walker. 
Hulk needs to do a little bit better than that, so I'm going to spend the power to add a dice for his next attack. Four dice hitting on four plus again only gets one hit. He crushes the last walker, but that still leaves two runners to deal with. And those guys are nasty because, of course, they have two actions each round. So it's up to Black Panther. T'Challa spends his first two actions moving into that room, and then he goes and attacks, and he spends his one and only power to upgrade his Vibranium Claws with Hard Slash. That'll drop the toughness of any of the enemies in the zone by one. That doesn't matter because it's a minimum of one and the runners only have a toughness of one. But more importantly, it allows him to reroll any misses. So now he's got two attacks with his Vibranium Claws hitting on three plus, And with that hard slash, he manages to kill both of them. So Hulk and Black Panther are both at two experience because they both killed two zombies. And we're over to Vision. Vision is my one and only ranged attacker, so I don't need him picking up a Koye because her ability wouldn't help him. I'd also like to keep him kind of close to the street in case he needs to clear out any bad guys showing up from those spawn zones. So he just moves two zones into the building with everybody else, and then he draws a heroic trait. Actually, he's going to draw two heroic traits because he has the adaptive strategy ability as his blue ability. That allows him to draw two traits and pick the one that he likes. He draws Tenacious and Focused. They're both pretty good. I decide I'm going to lose Focus, shuffle that back into the deck, keep Tenacious. I can discard that and reroll any of the dice in an attack. With all the heroes having activated, it's time for the zombie turn. Iron Man hears something going on down the street, so spends his two actions to move to the center top. Looking around for someone to blast, but he can't see anyone. Okoye then moves into the zone with all the super friends. The first spawn zone on the left gives us a single runner, and the top spawn zone gives us extra walker activation. So all the walkers on the board would go if there are any walkers on the board, which there aren't, and if we weren't in the blue experience level, which we are. Okay, back to the hero's turn. Everyone powers up one, and my primary problem is that I've got this zombie Iron Man right outside the door. I don't really want to send any of my brawlers to go deal with him because he is standing on a spawn zone. Don't need to be hanging out there, so Vision gets the job. Vision's going to spend a power-up action to bring him up to four power, going to spend one move action to come out onto the street, and then zap his good old solar beam from his forehead into Tony Stark. Seven dice looking for four up. Iron Man has a health of four, so I need four successes, and I get it. Don't even need to use my heroic trait. Down goes Iron Man. Not sure if he's dead or not. Might show up later in the campaign. That's the deal with zombies, especially zombie superheroes. Anyway, Vision gets four XP for all that, and we're over to Black Panther. While Okoye is right there in his zone, it makes sense that you would want to follow around her king to make sure he's okay during the apocalypse. So Black Panther spends one action to quote-unquote rescue Okoye. That brings Black Panther up to full power, and from now on he can spend one power to perform a free melee attack. Kind of a cool ability that Okoye gives. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty good. Everything seems to be going my way for right now, so I think I'm going to take a bit of a chance. I'm going to try and wrap up this game as quickly as I can. Black Panther's going to go back out onto the street and open up the door on the right. With some good spawn rolls, maybe I can sort that thing out, and we'll be well on our way to completing this mission. Unfortunately, the first spawn zone in the top right gives us a runner, and the spawn zone in the big building right in front of me gets me two brutes. That is not great. The big problem is, is that we're going to spawn a bystander in the lower right, and that's going to be Pepper Potts. And unless I do something about that whole situation, that runner's going to move in there in the zombie turn and eat Pepper. And as much as Goop is a scam, she probably doesn't deserve that. So somehow I'm going to have to fight my way in there, and that's where those two brutes become a problem. Each of those takes two hits to eliminate, and so that's a lot of dead flesh to get through. And of course, whoever I send in there is probably going to get bit by the runner, but I guess that's why we brought the Hulk. Banner spends his two actions to bound across the street and into that first building, and then spends his one and only power on his one and only attack, so that's four dice looking for four plus. I need to get at least two of these, or I'm going to take a big hit this round. He does manage to get two hits, downs one of the brutes, another XP for Hulk, but he's going to take some damage. Over to Spider-Man, I'd really like to swing him over and to help out Hulk, but I'd hate to backtrack into this room because I still need that objective. Sorry about this banner, but we need to keep moving forward. Spider-Man moves one zone up, takes the objective, gets himself 5 XP, and then moves one zone down. So over to the zombie phase, sure enough, the brute punches Hulk for one point of damage, the runner moves into his zone and then chomps on him for another point. The runner in the lower left moves two spaces to the right to end up in the bottom center. 
Pepper Potts would normally try and move into a hero's zone, but that zone is filled with zombies, so she just stays where she is. Then to the spawn phase, we get another brute in the lower left, and we get two brutes in the top center. Tons of brutes on this map. So back to the hero turn, and we're going to start with Hulk. Hulk has taken two damage, which would be a big problem for most other heroes. Fortunately, Hulk has the blue ability Gamma Rage. He starts with five health, so he still has three left. Not only that, but at the beginning of the round, instead of earning just one power, he gets an additional power for every wound that he's taken. So he gains three power. He's going to use all of it on his first attack, so he's going to be rolling six dice, hitting on four pluses, but he only gets a single hit through. Not great, Hulk. And since I have to attack the brutes first that doesn't kill one off so no casualties for hulk that's got to make him mad spends his second action to power up gives himself two power then for his third and final action goes and attacks again with that plus two power this time he gets two hits manages to kill the brute but a little underwhelming for the big green machine Vision is up next. He's going to spend his first action to zap his solar beam into the room with Hulk, and he manages to kill off the runner in there. Good, that was the most dangerous guy right now. His second action, he goes and fires to the zone to the south where that runner had moved up the round before. Kills that guy off too. Nicely done, Vision. Spends his last action to move into the building on the right. Black Panther is up next. He has full power, Okoye by his side, and he's looking to cause some trouble. He is not scared of those brutes to the north at all. Spends his first action to move in there. Spends one power to activate a Koye so he gets a free melee attack. Spends another power to upgrade that with hard slash. So both those brutes go down to toughness one. He's got two attacks hitting on a three plus with a reroll. Manages to kill both of them off. Two more XP for Black Panther. And that was a free action thanks to a Koye helpfully jabbing with her spear. So he's got two more actions. He just moves to the exit. I don't leave just yet though, want to see if my team needs some help before I go. Spider-Man is up next, moves two zones into the zone with Hulk and Vision, spends his power to activate a special ability and pull Pepper Potts into his zone and then his last action to rescue her. Spider-Man goes up to full power and can now spend a power to draw a heroic trait, don't need to do that right now though. It's the zombie turn, there's only one zombie on the board right now and that's the brute in the lower left, he moves one zone forward, and then we're on to spawns. The zone in the lower left gives us a zombie hero and it's zombie Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange can be a little bit dangerous when he activates and he's not in a zone with a superhero. His first action is to move to the closest zone with a superhero, which means that he can then spend his next action punching a wound onto us. So unless you eliminate him right away, someone's going to take a hit. But he only spawned this round, so we don't need to worry about him right now. So we go into the second spawn zone, and we get another zombie hero. And it's zombie Captain America. Oh no, Captain America didn't make it either. The Avengers roster has taken some hits. When zombie Captain America's zone is attacked, he can cancel any hits on the roll of a 5-plus with his vibranium shield. But you know what? This is a little bit too scary for us. It's time for the new Avengers to go. I'm going to start with Black Panther, and he's going to break open the door to the south. Clear an exit for his friends. And then he's going to leave. We'll deal with the zombie Captain America some other day. Vision is up next. He's going to take the last objective in that big room. He grabs five experience. That actually pushes him up to yellow. Again, doesn't make a big difference because we're out of here. Moves two zones and exits. Same thing with Spider-Man and Hulk. We take off, hopefully regroup. We'll attack these zombie Avengers some other time. Game over, we win. So a nice easy game as these tutorial missions are, although I did take two hits on Hulk. We know four heroes that are alive, we know two bystanders that are alive, and unfortunately we found out that three heroes are zombies. I'll add those to the tally for the next video. The deal with this game, though, if you don't mind a little bit of a story, is that I actually played this last summer. As soon as the box came in, I went and played the game, took all the pictures, figured out what models I used, with the idea that I would then go and paint all the models, and I would take real pictures, and I would present this to you now. Anyway, when I finally went to take the nice pictures after I'd had all the models painted up, I went in and I found out that I made a big mistake with the first time that I played this game. All those little spaces between the interior rooms, they all looked like doors to me when I first played, and so that's the way I ran it. Every room I'd have to break open a door, spawn in that room, and then go to the next one. It didn't matter that much. I honestly think it made a little bit more of an exciting game. I still won. But it was such a big rules mistake, I decided to go and redo it, and this is the game that you see now. And the irony is, is that I needed to paint a lot less models for this game than I did for the original one. It's not that big a deal, I'm happy to have the painted models, but I could have had this to you months ago. 
If you're curious, the way the first game went, I opened up that first room on the left and found Zombie Captain America. We rushed in there trying to avoid Zombie Iron Man, and he punched Hulk a bunch of times, then some brutes came in. We finally managed to clear him out. By the time we got to the street, Zombie Strain showed up, but we did get rid of him right away. Anyway, it was a cool game, and it did showcase those zombie heroes a little bit more, so, you know, sorry they only showed up at the end. But I wanted to play things correctly. So, here we are. Hopefully we'll get to see the further adventures of this team of new Avengers before too long. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, observations, or concerns. I will see you on the next one.